the Supreme Court. Yes, the second most powerful court in the United States, right after Judge Judy. Out of all the justices on the Supreme Court, the oldest one is Stephen Breyer. And you know how it goes with old Supreme Court justices. Eventually, whether they like it or not, they go and meet the one true judge. So, Democrats have been relentlessly pestering Breyer to step down so that they can replace him before Mitch McConnell comes back into power and makes a rule that all Supreme Court justices have to have been platinum QAnon members in the past. And today, Breyer finally made the Democrats' dreams come true. Breaking news, a bombshell announcement out of the U.S. Supreme Court reverberating across the nation's legal and political landscape. CNN has learned that Justice Stephen Breyer plans to retire. Breyer is 83 years old and he has resisted calls to retire from liberals who want President Joe Biden to have a Supreme Court nomination slot that he can use this year. Apparently, Breyer has decided uh, to move forward with that retirement now, and it sets up a political battle here for President Biden, who will have the opportunity to nominate a Supreme Court justice as a result. Justice Stephen Breyer, the leading liberal on the court, he will retire. We're still not exactly sure of the timeline, but presumably not until the end of this term which ends at, usually at the end of June. This is big, y'all. Justice Breyer is retiring. Yeah, probably to focus more on his ice cream brand. I don't know. But honestly, no one, no one should be surprised by this news, right? It probably isn't fun being hounded all day by people screaming at you to retire. I mean, imagine it. Think about it. Everywhere this guy goes, people are telling him he should be retiring. He's probably in line at the grocery store and people are like, retire, bitch! Is it Starbucks? The name on the cup is retire, bitch! He's at the synagogue, and the rabbi is like, Baruch Atah, retire, bitch. And right now, a lot of Democrats are relieved, but I don't know, people. I feel like the only winner here is gonna be Mitch McConnell. Maybe I'm just scarred. Yeah, because even though the Republicans don't control the Senate, don't be shocked. Don't be shocked when Mitch still makes it happen. He's just gonna come out like, oh, it's a long-standing Senate tradition that we cannot confirm a Supreme Court justice in a year where there's a new season of Ozark on Netflix. Mwah. We all gotta watch it first and then process what happened. That shows crazy shit. Now, as to the speculation about who will replace Breyer, President Biden has already promised that if he gets the chance, he's going to nominate a black woman to the Supreme Court. Which you gotta admit, that's gonna be a really powerful moment. You know, when he's giving that speech, it's gonna be really special. Until he says that She's the finest Negro judge of the Negro Leagues, and she's, you know, come, come on, man. Come on, man. <clears throat> well, you know, Trevor, if we're gonna go racial with this Supreme Court judge thing, uh, I just wanna put it out there that uh, Asian Americans have a really strong history of jurisprudence in America. I mean, O.J. Simpson trial? That was us, man. Judge Ito, GOAT. He did that stuff, so if you like that outcome. Also, I don't know how many times I have to say this on the show, but I have a law degree, and also, I am extremely judgy. You know what I mean? I judge everything. Like, from when I wake up, I'm judging everyone. I'm judging you right now. Like, your suit, what's that, polka dots? That looks like shit. I'd be perfect <laughs> for this role. You know what I'm saying? Also, in America, there's only two jobs with lifetime appointments. That's the host of Price is Right and Supreme Court judge, which means you can't get fired, Trevor. Do you know how much shit I would talk if I couldn't get fired? No, no, tell me, Ronnie. I would talk so much shit. Yeah. I'd be so much more free to express myself. And isn't that what being America is about? Being free? Yeah, I would love to know all the things you have to say about me when you're free. I mean, <laughs> considering what you say about me when you're held back. Exactly, so let's work to make this happen. Biden, I'm available. i like to announce my candidacy for Supreme Court of the United States. Vote for me on Twitter. <laughs> Thank you, Ronnie. And that's a powerful statement. It's not polka dots, they're little, like, squiggly things. Okay, they look like shit. Anyway, let's move on to the big entertainment story everyone's talking about today. It's about Disney movies, which everyone loves, right? We all love Disney movies, especially the classics. They're the reason that we all believe in true love and all hate our stepmothers. And Disney loves remaking those films because Disney rarely understands the value of money. But as the originals get remade, people start to notice things that don't quite work in the modern era. 
as one famous actor just points it out. Walt Disney Studios on the defensive following harsh criticism by Emmy-winning actor Peter Dinklage over the upcoming live-action adaptation of the 1937 Snow White and the Seven Dwarves, starring West Side Story actress Rachel Zegler. I was a little taken back by the very, very, they're very proud to cast a, a Latino actress as Snow White. Yeah. But you're still telling the story of Snow still White. Snow White, yeah. And Seven Dwarfs. You're progressive in one way, and then, but you're still making that backward oh, story of back Seven Dwarfs <laughs> living in a cave. To get, what the you doing, man? Disney releasing a statement responding to the backlash, writing in part, to avoid reinforcing stereotypes from the original animated film, we are taking a different approach with these seven characters and have been consulting with members of the dwarfism community. Oh, boy. All right. Let me start by saying this from the beginning. I am not a dwarf. So if Peter Dinklage says that this is a problem, I'm not going to say that he's wrong. Because I've never watched Snow White and found the dwarves offensive, right? But I do understand what he's talking about. I genuinely do. Because if that movie was called Snow White and the Seven Blacks, I mean, that would be weird. And you could tell me, oh, Trevor, no, the blacks are actually the heroes. It's still a, it's, it's, it's a great story. Let me tell you something, yo, man, that's still a white lady and her friendly blacks. It would still set off my spidey sense. And look, I wish, I wish Disney the best of luck in this thing. Personally, I wouldn't touch the story with a 10-foot pole. Yeah, because it's still seven dwarves living in the forest. I don't think it's a great idea. And that's not even the biggest issue of all, because don't forget, the whole story revolves around a woman being drugged, and then some dude comes and kisses her without her consent. And I know Bill Cosby is now available for the role, but that's not the point. I'm just saying this thing is, uh, you know? Yeah, well, look, Trevor, can we just give Disney a chance and let's judge the movie after it gets made? I mean, they've, Disney has had a good history lately of, like, updating things and making character three-dimensional and bad guys good, right? Like, look at Cruella, right? From yeah. 101 yeah. Dalmatians. Okay, okay. Literally, the uh, cruel devil is her name and she kills puppies. And then they put Emma Stone in there in the prequel it turns out some puppies killed her mom. And then you go, oh, yeah. now I know why you were killing puppies in the second thing. So I'm just saying, give him a chance. Anyway, <laughs> let's talk about Joe Rogan, the king of podcasts, and Aaron Rodgers' personal physician. Whatever you think about him, Rogan is one of the most influential voices in America right now because 11 million people listen to his show. 11 million people, yeah. And some of what they hear is a little suspect, right? You know, whether it's misinformation about COVID or whatever was happening here. What did Michael Prejudice. Eric Dyson call you? A uh, mean, mean, angry an, white mean, man? Yeah, and, and a mean, angry white man, yeah. Hilarious. Yeah, yeah. You're not mean at all. Yeah. It's, uh... I am white. Actually, that's a lie, too. <laughs> I'm kind of tan, and he was actually not black. If you're tan, he was what sort the of f am I? Black and white thing is so strange yeah, because like the shades are tan so... Tan and brown. There's such a spectrum of shades of people, unless you're talking to someone who is, like, 100% African from the darkest place where they're not wearing any clothes all day and they've developed all that melanin to protect themselves from the sun. You know, it, even the term black is weird. Oh my God. I'm not black. I'm not black. Joe Rogan's right, I'm like a caramel Mocha fra Frappuccino, this, yo, this changes everything. This changes everything. <laughs> the police said I'm black. But yeah, apparently uh, Joe Rogan really wants to know why they say black people if they're not the color of a Sharpie. And this actually is a common question. Yeah, in fact, when my brother was five years old, he asked me the exact same thing. And I know a lot of people are upset about this, but look at the upside. At least Joe Rogan wasn't talking about vaccines, so that is a step in the right direction, right? Let's acknowledge that, you know? What was weird about this whole thing was Rogan's yeah. guest, though, Jordan Peterson, saying that his skin is actually tan. My man, you're not tan. Like, that guy is, that's white. If anyone buys skin tanner, and they end up looking like Jordan Peterson, they should sue the company. 
Have you seen his skin color? Like, he could be Snow White. The thing that these guys seem to be ignoring is that black people didn't call themselves black. You understand that, right? It's not like black people were like, we're black. No, in Africa, we have tribes. We have cultures, Zulu, Xhosa, Baganda, Igbo, Wakandans. <laughs> but then white people got there and they were like, wow, there's a lot of black people here. A <laughs> Lot of black people. Yeah, then in America, they invented a rule that if you had one drop of black blood in you, that makes you black, which defined how you were treated by the government and by society. Even vampires wouldn't bite you. Like, I thirst for that blood, but I'm applying for a mortgage. I can't risk it. <laughs>